हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम दिस क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम 2020 गेट एग्जाम एंड इज अ टू मार्क्स क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट लेट्स रीड आउट इट्स स्टेटमेंट देन विल सॉल्व इट कंसीडर अ नॉन पाइपलाइन प्रोसेसर ऑपरेटिंग एट 2.5 गीगाहर्ट्ज इट टेक्स 5 क्लॉक साइकल्स टू कंप्लीट एन इंस्ट्रक्शन यू आर गोइंग टू मेक अ फाइव स्टेज पाइपलाइन आउट ऑफ दिस प्रोसेसर ओवरहेड्स एसोसिएटेड विद द पाइपलाइनिंग फोर्स यू टू ऑपरेट द पाइपलाइन प्रोसेसर एट टू गीगाहर्ट्ज In a given program, assume that there are 30% memory instructions, 60% ALU instructions, and the rest are branch instructions. 5% of the memory instructions cause a stall of 50 clock cycles each due to cache misses, and 50% of the branch instructions cause a stall of two cycles each. Assume that there are no stalls associated with the execution of ALU instructions. For this program, the speed up achieved by the pipelined processor over the non-pipelined processor rounded off to two decimal places is okay. So you are given these two processors: pipelined version, uh, sorry, non-pipelined version, and its upgraded or pipelined version. The non-pipelined version. Runs at 2.5 gigahertz with the average cycles per instruction or CPI of five. First of all, let's analyze this one. They are saying it runs at 2.5 gigahertz. What does it mean? 2.5 gigahertz means 2.5 G clocks are generated in one second. Just take this 2.5G to that side. This becomes one clock is generated after every one by 2.5 into 10 raised to the power nine second. G is 10 raised to the power nine. This becomes one clock is generated after every one upon 2.5 nanoseconds. Okay. One clock requires one upon two point five nanoseconds for this processor. Now, one instruction requires five such clocks. What is the total time taken by one instruction on this processor? It will be five times one upon two point five nanoseconds because one instruction needs five clocks and one clock needs this much time. So time taken by one instruction is going to be five into one upon two point five nanoseconds. Okay. Just remember this. This is time taken by one instruction. Actually, we have found out this numerator. We are supposed to find out speed up. Speed up is defined by time taken by non-pipelined processor. Or the older version divided by time taken by latest version or the pipelined version. Okay, so numerator is done. Now let's analyze this pipelined processor. Okay, it runs on two gigahertz. From here we can easily find what is the time required for generating one clock. This will become two G clocks are generated in one second. And you'll just replace this 2.5 by 2 everywhere. That means in this processor, pipeline one, one clock is generated after every half nanosecond. Okay, like this. But you don't know how many clocks does one instruction take. Here they have clearly mentioned CPI is five, but in this processor. The CPI may vary due to various types of stalls. Okay, here just see memory instructions. Thirty percent of the instructions are memory instruction, and out of this thirty percent, five percent stall uh, instructions incur fifty stalls. Fifty stalls means CPI becomes fifty one, and two stalls means. CPI becomes three. 
ओके बिकॉज सी पी आई इज नंबर ऑफ स्टॉल प्लस वन वाई कैन आई से दैट और हाउ कैन आई से दैट जस्ट सी इज इट विजिबल या फ्रॉम हेयर इट्स विजिबल ओके से दिस वन इज अ फोर स्टेज पाइपलाइन प्रोसेसर now the first stage uh the first instruction will use the first stage here second third then fourth assume there are no stalls that means the second instruction will use these four stages like this here you can see cpi comes out to be 1 when we have zero stalls cpi is 1 similarly try to introduce one stall here introducing one stall means this clock cycle is completely wasted okay now it will be 1 2 3 4 and four, like this now you can see between completion of two consecutive instructions there are two clock cycles so we can say on a average each instruction uses two clock cycles okay that's why cpi is 2 stalls were 1 cpi is 2 so you can conclude that number of stalls plus 1 gives us the cpi so that's how i can write cpi 51 and cpi 3 for these two cases okay anyways the point that we were discussing was we know how much time is required to generate one clock but it's not known how many clocks are required by one instruction for that purpose you need to analyze this information let's do that now let me just clear some space so have a look here out of 30% memory instructions 5% incur a cpi of 51 Out of thirty percent, five percent—that means zero point zero five—five percent in instructions incur a CPI of or have a CPI of fifty-one. The remaining ninety-nine percent of the memory instructions, the remaining instructions from this thirty percent, will have a CPI of one only. Okay, that means point nine five into one. Okay, how can I say that it will be having CPI of one? Because they haven't mentioned anything about stalls, so you can assume they have zero stall cycles. Zero stall cycles means CPI one. Basically, we are assuming the best case. Then you have sixty percent ALU instructions, which again. Have a CPI of one. It's given that they don't uh, cause any stalls. It's given in the question. Now let's talk about the remaining ten percent instructions. Out of these ten percent instructions, fifty percent, fifty percent of these ten percent have a CPI of three. That means point five into three. Plus the remaining fifty percent. Look, out of these ten percent branch instructions, fifty percent are having a CPI of three. The remaining fifty percent out of these will have a CPI of one because we'll assume zero stall cycles. So just add point fifty into one. That's it. I think it is visible. It must be okay. Anyways. Uh, i'm just speaking if it's not visible you just listen to what i'm saying so let me just use some use a calculator to solve this so it comes out to be so this one is 
this much is 1.05 so this is 1.05 plus 0.6 into 1 means 0.6 this is 5 threes are 15 1.5 plus 0.5 is 2 that means 0.1 into 2 so 0 0.6 plus 0 0.2 this much becomes 0 0.8 and 1.05 plus 0 0.8 is 1.85 so what is this 1.85 what did we just calculate 1.85 is the number of clocks required by one instruction on average in this program okay such a program will have an average CPI of 1.85 with respect to a pipelined processor. Okay. A non-pipelined processor, you need not do such things because you need, they have simply given the CPI is 5. Moreover, uh, branch instructions won't create any stalls because there is no pipelining at the first place. Okay. So this information is only relevant to pipelined processor. Now we calculated the CPI here is 1.5. Just do the same thing. It is CPI into time taken by one instruction. I think I have erased that calculation. Uh, there we just calculated time required uh, required by one clock is two, 1 by 2 nanoseconds. Okay. Just like it is 1, uh, one by 2.5 nanosecond. This one will be 1 by 2 nanoseconds or half nanosecond. Now one instruction requires these many clocks we already know one clock requires half nanosecond so the total time required by one instruction will be number of clocks into time taken by one clock okay now you can just divide both of them to get your answer uh, this is time taken by non pipelined processor and this one is time taken by pipelined processor divide both of them to get the speed up let me do that for you 5 upon 2.5 this means 50 upon 25 which comes out to be 2 so it is 2 divided by 185 by 200 185 by 200 so this 200 will just go into the numerator and this comes out to be 400 divided by 185 400 divided by 185 2.16216 the answer is 2.16216 just take the two decimal places your answer is 2.16 in numerical answer type questions I am again repeating please round off to two decimal places uh, don't just write 2.1 in hurry be careful after just solving the entire question, you will lose the entire marks. Okay, so be careful here.